Okay, in that short time, I've just rolled a SIG. Smoking, very bad for you. <clears throat> but anyway, this ls command is now returning to us this name, pcube5. It's actually the transform node for this cube that we've got selected. Alright, but we've got a problem here, because if I carry out this, I will 100% get an error. That error says, error cannot convert data of type string brackets, well, string brackets to type string. So what it's actually telling me here is, hang about, I'm getting a list, and you've only de declared a single element. So this is not a list variable or a, a, an array that can hold multiple entries. Now, even though this ls command is returning one item, which is pcube5, it's returning it in a list consisting of one item because I could have multiple things selected. So I could like select all of those and say, what's, uh, what have I got selected? And it returns a list. Now it's always going to be a list whether it returns nothing or just a single item. So I have to redeclare this now. I'm going to say objects and array. Now what I've now got, I get no error. And if I simply say print objects, and I'm typing with a cigarette in my hand. I don't have to put the angle brackets. I can just say objects. And it lists, uh, it, it prints all the objects uh, that I've currently got selected because this command passed all that information over to this string array. So that's a string array. Now, something that I might, uh, I, I'll do really quickly is introduce us to a, a random command. Now, I can simply say in Maya, and this is just a, a maths command. I can say generate me a number from minus blah 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 to plus la la la. Carry that out. And every time I carry it out, it's going to generate me a random number. Now let's have a look at this. The rand function, like I say, is just a maths function. These uh these uh curved uh, brackets, uh, n uh, shift 9 and shift 0. Um, these are the scope, which means I am passing something to this command, or this, this uh, procedure-based command. And I'm passing two numbers, because it expects two numbers. It expects a minimum and a maximum, and it's just going to pick a random number in between. Now, yeah, random isn't always that random. Uh, especially not the first time, sometimes. Um, however, uh, it does it does do the job well. Now, if I've got all these objects uh, in the scene at the moment, and I want to go through them, I actually need a loop. So I need to loop through this list. So this list might have, in fact, let's create a few more. Let's just duplicate these, select them, duplicate these, select them, duplicate. So I've got 757 cubes now. Um, so if I carry out this command, I've now just stored... Where are we? I've just stored 757 uh, cubes in, uh, in here, or the names of 757 cubes. Now, if I want to do one thing to those 757, I have to go through this list and do it individually. Now, there's three ways I could do that. In fact, there's probably more. Um, but there's three primary loops. But there's one very friendly way of going through it. And it is as follows. For... And then we'll say, I'm going to name these. I've got multiple objects here, but I'm going to say single object in objects. Now, what I've done here is I've got another variable. But I haven't declared it. Up here, I've declared my, uh, you know, very important that we declare variables. I've declared it. I've, called, I've got its name. It's a list. I've assigned all these names into that list. 
Except here I've got a variable I haven't declared. Uh, the for loop, or the for in loop, actually does it for me. So what actually what happens here is it looks at this list and every single item in this list causes and we'll put these uh, curly braces or brackets in it causes, because this is a correct syntax for a for in loop by the way it causes this uh, in between these uh, brackets to be executed 700, well how many items are in there? 757 times it's going to do whatever's inside here uh, now something uh, something that happens every single time it goes through is it gets the item in entry so we'll go through it in entry 0 it'll be p cube 1 it says right I'm gonna set off p cube 1 and all its other mates are stored here but in order to reference it individually what it does is it passes whatever entry it's on over onto single object so a single object now has PQ1. Then it goes along and does whatever's in here. Um, once it's finished, it goes back up to this list and says, right, I've done PQ1. Is there anything else? Well, hell yes. We've got 757 of these. So then it goes to PQ2, passes PQ2 over into this single object variable name again, and then does whatever's in here. Um, and something really uh, easy to do is I'm just going to come up with a print statement. Now I can print anything in here. I'm just going to introduce us to a new line break, a uh, new line character. So this actually says to Maya, print a new line. And underneath, I'm also going to have a print statement saying uh, single OBJ. So what this is going to do now is it's going to print every single uh, wait a minute it's going to do it 700 odd times so so it's printed the name or it's printed this single object but because it's looping through 700 odd times and it's assigning every time I get a unique name now that means I can do something to a single object and I'm actually doing it to absolutely everything in my list so I could quite simply say delete and it would get rid of all my cubes but I really don't want to do that at the moment so just delete what you've got in here and this is our starting point our starting script and next lesson will add some randomness to our scene with 700 odd objects <laughs>